put your campaign on target. Charter can help with targeted advertising solutions based on where your voter lives and what he or she is watching. Call us today, 394-2484. Welcome back. Later in the show, we'll speak with Missouri State Representative Paula Voda. And then, Ed and I will take a look at a couple of recent TV ads. But first, we're pleased to have Antonio French join us on Midwest Talking Points. Antonio is a political blogger and founder of PubDef.net. He's also a political consultant and a newly elected Democratic committeeman representing the 21st Ward in North St. Louis. And in the interest of full disclosure with Antonio as a guest, yours truly is a contributor to PubDef.net. You can view my video column right now at www.pubdef.net by clicking on Columns. Antonio, welcome. We, we opened the show by talking about Missouri's status as a toss-up state. New voter registration seemed to have gone way up. An estimated 225,000 people, perhaps, will have registered right here in Missouri with a lot of those in St. Louis. Obama, Senator Obama and his campaign has, really has people fired up. So, so does Governor Palin, of course. In the city and the county, the boards of elections have even hired thousands of new poll workers. So is it going to be enough to cover all those new voters? Are we going to see a repeat of the situation in 2000 when a judge ordered the St. Louis polls to be kept open? What do you think is going to happen? Well, I'm hoping there won't be a repeat of, uh, of 2000. But I think there, we can't expect a, a very busy election day. There's going to be a lot, a, a lot of turnout, uh, probably record turnout in a lot of areas. And so uh, we're hoping that the poll workers uh, and the election board can keep up with the traffic. I know the, uh, the St. Louis City Election Board has been working hard hiring workers and training workers. Uh, but I guess the, the bottleneck in the system often becomes a, a, lot, of, a lot of traditional workers at, at the polls are actually elderly workers. And, uh, and sometimes that can slow down the process a little bit. But I think the election board has done a good job of trying to train those folks and to uh, at least get specialists, if not at every poll, uh, at least close to the polls to be able to respond to any crisis that to might happen. To help with some of the new technology as well, right? Right. As a new committeeman, what is your role uh, with regard to poll workers and helping the elections run smoothly? Well, as a committeeman, that's really the job of the committee person is uh, these elections are, are where we're supposed to earn our keep. So uh, we do what we can do to work with the election board before election day to place workers uh, in the ward um, at the polling places that that um, their neighbors are going to be voting at. So that helps uh, smooth the, the process a little bit because people know each other there. Um, we also want to make sure that, they, that the people in our ward are familiar with the ballot before they go to the, the actual uh, polling place so they know what to look for. And one of the things we've been telling our, our folks in our ward is to be, uh, to be ready for a long ballot. It's going to be a longer than usual ballot, so be patient. And, uh, and don't just go just to vote for the presidential candidate and then go home. There's a lot of other important things on the ballot, so be patient. I, I, I think I missed, uh, maybe we cut it out when we taped it, that you wanted to probably say that the Republican-controlled election board has made such strides since 2004. But let's leave that aside. <laughs> I wanted to ask you a very specific question about St. Louis City. It really has become, in the last 30 or 35 years, a one-party city where really the primary is what matters when it comes to mayor, state rep, even congressmen. Uh, congressman Clay and Congressman Gephardt have been, were dominant forces for years. How does that affect a, a young uh, politician, young person trying to get involved in the process? And what does that mean uh, for St. Louis and the region? Well, uh, it's true that um, almost exclusively Democrats get elected in the city and that when it comes to statewide races, uh, city voters vote overwhelmingly Democratic. Uh, that isn't to say, though, that we don't have conflicts in the city and really conflicting, uh, not parties, but the, you know, the oldest joke in St. Louis City is that there are two parties, black Democrats and white Democrats. <laughs> so, uh, but, you know, we, we, have our, we have our fair share of conflict. And as you know, with the, the two-party system in Jefferson City or in, or in Washington, D.C., the effect is that you've got two sides holding each other accountable. And so uh, we do have conflicts that, you know, as I'm sure Mayor Slay can tell you, that, uh, that hold their feet to the fire. So, Well, and one way to hold uh, different election officials accountable and elected officials accountable is through the media. And you've had an alternative form of the media over the past few years. You've had your own blog, pubdef.net, mm -hmm. um, which was one of really the first ones to use emerging technologies. I was very glad to see that you were coming on the show today. Tell us a little bit how you got into that and what your role is as a blogger. Yeah, well, uh, PubDef actually started as a newspaper back in uh, 2002. Uh, it, was, it survived for about two years. It was called Public Defender. 
And the idea then was that as someone who watches politics and is interested in politics, I felt that there was a void. Uh, a lot of the stories that, that, uh, that I knew about just weren't getting reported. And so uh, we did that as long as we could. Uh, newspapers are very expensive uh, mm -hmm. to maintain. But as the, uh, as the internet gave, way to bir gave birth to blogs and, and um, technologies that we can self-publish, um, we went to the web and found it pubdef.net. And yeah, you're right, we, we did use some new technologies and we cutting edge, um, uh, started posting videos mm -hmm. of uh, different neighborhood meetings and uh, interviews with, with politicians. You were really one of the first in Missouri to do that. Yeah, yeah, and, uh, and everybody's catching up now. So, <laughs> <laughs> so now we're trying to move on to some new things. Uh, try, always trying to stay on that cutting edge. But yeah, PubDef has, has grown and uh, we've got quite an audience and an active readership, so I'm proud of that. Well, let me ask you the sort of the softball question, but I think you deserve deserve to answer it. What happens in Missouri? Tell us who wins the governor's race, and tell us who wins the presidential race, and give us the breakout. Well, how does it how does it look on November fifth? Well, uh, you know, it, it's a good time to be a Democrat. <laughs> yeah, Minnie, Minnie's been telling me that. All week. <laughs> it's great. <laughs> uh, it looks like Jay Nixon will very likely be our next governor, so uh, we're going to have some change up there in Jefferson City in that regard. I think the Democrats are going to pick up uh, quite a few seats in the House and the, and the Senate. I think the, uh, the presidential race is, is still real close. And uh, I'm not going to be happy until actually election night and all the votes are counted. It's going to be very close. Uh, right now, most of the polls have Obama up within the margin of error. And that's great. And, and as you mentioned, the, the, large, uh, uh, new, the large body of new voters, I think, is going to work in his benefit. We also have a lot of young people who have been uh, very energized by Obama and uh, a lot of new voters in that respect. So I think that's going to work in the Democrats' favor, and I'm hoping so. I've been working very Obama hard. Obama wins so. by a point or two? Uh, Obama by three. Thanks, Antonio. Thanks for being here. Antonio, from running political races to running and winning your own race for committee man, to keeping up on our city with pub dev, you're truly a multitasking guy out in the city and out across our state. Thanks again for fitting us into your schedule. Oh, thanks for having me. Thanks. Coming up next, Representative Paula Voda, the Minority Leader of the Missouri House of Representatives. We'll be right back with more Midwest Talking Points. This moment in Missouri political history is provided by the Missouri State Archives. In the fall of 1869, St. Louis was the site of a special three-day convention to discuss the movement of the federal government to a more central location. Many Americans were in agreement that Washington, D.C. was an impractical location for a capital city once the nation had already grown from a group of Atlantic colonies to stretch all the way to the Pacific Ocean. A Missouri congressman named C.A. Newcomb introduced a resolution to move the capital to St. Louis, but only three states sent delegates to the convention, and in the end, these competing interests ensured the capital would remain in the District of Columbia. To discover more Missouri history moments, visit MissouriDigitalHeritage.com.